Okay, it looks like our environment is properly set up. I don't need to run any sort of configure command. Um, thought I did, but I guess we're okay without it. So what I'd like to do is see if we can run Visual Studio Code. Now, I already have Visual Studio Code installed on my Windows machine. So if you don't have Visual Studio Code, you need to go ahead and pause here and, and go get that and get it installed on Windows. Now, I'm going to run it from my Linux machine by entering the command code space dot, dot indicating to run using the current directory. And we should see Visual Studio Code take off, which is exactly what we want. I get a recommendation that says the remote WSL extension is recommended for your Windows Linux subsystem. So I'm going to install that. It's exactly what I want. And now I'd like to install also the COBOL extensions. So in my extensions area, I'm going to search for COBOL. The one that I've decided to use is this RECH because they have a debugger. Now, I don't know that I'm going to have everything all working the way I want to. And there's lots of different choices. So this is not the only version or option by any means. But I'm going to choose install. And then I also want to install the debugger. And then it looks like everything is installed now. So because I've installed all these extensions, I am going to restart Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to close it and just run it again. And you can tell that that's something that was important because we're getting an install kicked off on our Linux subsystem side. And Visual Studio Code is here for us now. In my file area, I'm seeing my learner folder on our Linux subsystem. I can see the hidden files that I was looking at earlier, looking in that folder. So I've got my learner stuff here. I'd like to create a folder for my COBOL code inside there. So I'm going to create, I want a new folder. Can I do that here? New file, new folder, and let's call that COBOL. Now in my COBOL folder, I would like to create a new file. And this is going to be hello.cob. Be my first COBOL program code. Now I'm going to sneak because I've already got that. I'm going to copy it. Just a little text file, and I'll copy it and paste it and let you see it. Save that.
looking at our COBOL code. This is what was um, in our COBOL PDF document that we found in our download of the GNU COBOL. This first program doesn't really have a lot going on, but we do have some required COBOL code. First of all, notice that I didn't start in column one. We left a few columns, I believe six, for line numbers. That was a requirement for COBOL source code that it start in column seven. And then we have some required statements. Our identification division followed by a period, our program ID followed by a period, then the program name followed by a period. COBOL is very polite and it uses proper punctuation. Grace Hopper, when she created the COBOL programming language, wanted it to be a common business-oriented language, so she made it include punctuation. Now, besides our identification division, which we use to identify our program, we can have a procedure division. And in our procedure division, we only issue one command. We issue the display command, and we're telling COBOL to display this string that we have contained within double quotes. Again, we end that statement with a period, and then we issue the stop run statement. So our program is complete, but there's not a lot to it, right? So I should have that then on my Linux machine. Okay. I'll go into my COBOL folder, do a directory command, and sure enough, there's my hello.cob file that I'm working on in Visual Studio. Code. There is a command I can use to display that file in Linux, the type command. Oops, how about cat? Something will work. And there it is. So we do see that we have the, the right code in our program. So we're ready to compile. Looking at our document that we got with our download of the open source compiler, we see that we can use the command do 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 code C with the dash X switch. And then we enter the name of our COBOL program. Hello.cob. Since we didn't receive any errors, we know that the compile worked properly. So now we can run our program. And we're going to prefix that name. Let's do a directory command. And we see now we have a file that's just named hello. And that's our executable. So we can run that by entering dot slash to say search the current folder and then the name of the executable file hello and there is our message hello world from COBOL so we have installed Visual Studio Code to work with the Linux subsystem for Windows so that we can use this GNU COBOL compiler we're going to continue to work to get Visual Studio Code customized so that it is color coding things for us and being a real tool that will help us in our learning of COBOL. But we're all set now. We have our environment ready to go and we can start doing some of the things in the textbook and some of the things that we'll have in some follow-up videos. So see you soon.